issues surrounding the Supreme Court judgment on the Imo governorship seat, electoral reforms, the legality of the Amotekun security, and much more. That's what we discuss on today's edition of Law Weekly. We talk to a professor of law, Professor Akin Oyebode. We also have our weekly recap of the top trending stories from the courtrooms. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shola Shieli. The Supreme Court judgment on the Imo governorship continues to generate so much reactions, both positive and negative. I got Professor Akinyo Yebode to also weigh in on this issue and much more. Well, uh, I think the judgment is understandable in the context of the Supreme Court being the highest court in the land. Uh, I worry so much about the usurpation of the power of the electorate mm -hmm. uh, to go to heaven the way they want, mm -hmm. to select their own leaders. The situation where the courts now act as surrogates of the electorate is not the wholesome state of affairs. Ideally, everything should end at the level of the polls. So uh, it's a question of uh, give and take. Uh, I don't particularly like the decision. But when the full court of seven justices decide on the matter, who are we uh, to query the wisdom or sagacity mm -hmm. of the highest court in the land? As a way of correcting the lapses in the system, I imagine that you're talking about electoral reforms. What, what kind of reforms do you think that we need, the country needs now? I think uh, it's the Constitution, as well as the Electoral Act, that need uh, reworking. We need to uh, create a situation where decisions by the electoral body are final. Okay? We don't want a situation where the judiciary will usurp uh, the role and place of the electorate. Then there are all sorts of things that are untoward with the electoral process. Uh, we expect that electoral act amendment, uh, which the president has refused or thus far uh, desisted from signing into law, will be done so that we can wish a better day for uh, the electoral process. Uh, the sort of things that Nigeria still experiences in its electoral process, uh, the question of the method of transmission of results, that should be corrected. I don't know the size of our electoral uh, population, but the country of over 100 million, and uh, with people trying to elect the government, then the fault lines of Nigerian electoral process uh, politically, uh, socially, economically, and then in terms of moral values, religion, and what have you. Uh, it's a perfect recipe for chaos. Mm -hmm. So whoever is to administer the law has its work cut out for him. Mm -hmm. So I don't envy Yakubu at all or mm -hmm. any of his commissioners. Nigeria is a very complex society yes. to administer things in a way where nobody will cry havoc. Right now, people are already implying that you should hand in or throw in the tower, that uh, INEC had knocks on the head mm -hmm. at uh, electoral disputes where their opinion was reversed. No, I think we just have to recognize that we have a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not perfect. We are not there yet. Mm -hmm. So I want something like electronic voting. voting. I want something like electronic transmission of results. I don't want a situation where you have 92 political parties. But, but are, we, are we ready for electronic voting? Are we ripe for it, especially where a lot of people don't even have access to this electronic that would enable electronic voting, well, shall computers I, and stuff? There's no time we are going to be fully ready. This mm. is the 21st century. We are no longer in the 18th century. And mind you, Nigerians have been voting since 1922. Okay, so it's not that we are all novices in the electoral process. I think we have to redress the rough edges 
of our electoral process in order to force us into the 21st century. <laughs> force us? Yes, you drag us screaming, and we have to do what needs to be done. So that by the end of the day, so at the end, 24 hours after voting has been concluded, we can make focus as to who won instead of waiting for what we call in our own language inconclusive results. <laughs> we don't need all that. It's an insult mm. to Nigerians with all the capacity we have, mm. the number of people well educated who have been to school. It's an embarrassment to mm. some of us that. We couldn't, we, we've not been able to get things right. But in a country where there is a greater majority who are not in school, who are not educated, and then you talk about electronic voting? Well, I, I don't think uh, it's something that is impossible. Uh, most Nigerians use telephones, mm -hmm. uh, even in the villages. Okay, uh, It's not rocket science to punch some uh, items on the electoral So if, if, we, if we are forced to use it, we will cope? No, we, we will will, you have to teach. You have to bring people online. Up to speed. Yes, up to speed so they can exercise their franchise mm. without let or hindrance. Mm. Okay. Now we've been dragging us very slowly, unimaginably so. Mm. And I will want a situation where if we could use the card readers, I think we should just step things up mm. to the next level where full electronic voting and transmission of results. So you reduce and minimize the human agency mm. in the electoral process. Sure. Talking about the outcome of, of the elections and the results and what we've seen, the CJN, Justice Tanko Mohammed, was recently lamenting about the burden of hearing election petitions, especially with the timelines imposed by the Constitution. You know, he, he asked lawyers to speak for the judges in finding a solution to the caseload of the apex court. What do you make of that one? The court should be uh, liberated from the tedium of handling uh, election petitions. Uh, it's, uh, it amounts to self-abnegation and lack of confidence in ourselves that we have now to push things to the judiciary. To determine uh, So, us. and I've heard people say we need, like, uh, uh, Honorable Ways, his recommendation, that we need a special uh, wing of the courts to handle uh, Election. electoral offenses and things like that. Uh, we are postponing the evil day. Now, if we accept that we are not ready for the modern electoral process, maybe we can devise something uniquely Nigerian in terms of who governs us. The issue, the stakes are so high in Nigeria, there are people who stop at nothing. And that's why people spoke about do or die. And uh, people sell their houses in order to get elected. And the first thing they do is to recoup their losses. I, I think it's sad and unacceptable for Nigeria to be encumbered by uh, the wild hopes and aspirations of political contenders. But I want to take you back to, you know, talking about election petitions and the outcomes and the contest that goes on in courts. Last week on this show, I had a um, senior advocate of Nigeria, Robert Clark. He was of the view that the Supreme Court had imposed on itself the burden of these election petition cases because it, before now it stopped at um, the Court of Appeal. And then when there was that conflict between Justice Katsina Alu and the then president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ayo Salami, that was when he went up to the Court of Appeal. He made a case for retired judges coming in to sit on election petitions. And I don't know, what do you think? And then we would have a constitutional court, which would be like seven members, comprise seven members of the Supreme Court, to sit on appeal on those cases that the judiciary, uh, the retired judges sit on as election uh, tribunals. What, what do you think? Do you think that's a workable solution? It's an ingenious uh, suggestion. Because there are a lot of retired judges which we think can be brought into the system and they handle all these election petition cases. Because another uh, issue is that people complain that justice is not done to other litigants during election years. Election petition cases take the time of the courts. Well, uh, uh, Chief Robert Clark is a distinguished alumnus of the University of Lagos Faculty of Law. Mm -hmm. 
I missed that interview, but I think his idea should not be thrown off in the jiffy. Uh, we have to, as I said, think out of the box, uh, relieve the regular judiciary of the tedium, the onus, the great obligation of sitting through uh, those election petitions. Uh, the tons of material that they have to pour over, and then what you rightly pointed out, at the expense of oh, the dispensing litigants. justice to ordinary litigants. Mm -hmm. The writ of certiorari is something that we have to encourage so that we leave only cases that are of high uh, value in terms of high precedential value uh, for the higher cost to dispense uh, so that justice may be served. A situation where judges are overburdened by uh, innumerable cases I don't think it's healthy for the legal order. So I, 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 I didn't listen to uh, Robert Clark, but I think his idea is worth examining further. Finally, Prof, I want to get your views on the legality of this Amotekun, the security um, outfits that the governors of the Southwest have put together. There are those who say that um, policing security issues are within the exclusive uh, purview, jurisdiction or of the federal government. That maybe it's illegal, but there are others who say no, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. But what do you think? Where do you stand? Well, I think the Attorney General of the Federation misdirected himself in his statement by linking it with defense. Uh, defense is a matter on the exclusive list. We don't need different armies in the country. But in terms of uh, stopping people from self-help. Uh, I think the Amoteku solution is novel and quite attractive. Uh, more so in different parts of the country, uh, different uh, states have devised uh, really uh, interesting methods of law enforcement. Uh, in the religious-minded part of the country, we have Hizba, okay, to handle matters that are offensive to Islam. Then even in the north, in the, the northeast, you have the joint, uh, civilian joint task force uh, who help the military in maintaining order. Uh, I think rather than uh, condemning uh, the Southwest, I think they need to be saluted and congratulated. Uh, look at how much the states in the Southwest have been pay to sustain the police. Lagos is a typical example. Under Ambody, you remember how much he did in terms of refurbishing the needs of the police. I am an advocate of state police. So if the Nigeria, as some people would say, if we are not ready yet for state police, then let's have uh, a neighborhood watch type, uh, like the Megad, Coming to this estate, you know you were questioned at the gate. Uh, I must tell you that at night we have police men guarding us here. Uh, we levy ourselves to have armed police sustaining us in this estate. So I, I don't see what is wrong with the states in the southwest bringing their efforts together, financing, sustaining, training and even giving the wherewithal to prevent uh, the breakdown of law and order. That's the way I understand what uh, Amotekun is all about. Melanie is not a court of law. He's just attorney general. He can advise the president. But he can't pontifically state what the law is. Only the judges are so placed within our own jurisprudence. I think even if he had reservations, the way he put it, to make nonsense of the governors in the southwest is most untoward and uh, he owes the governors an apology and that's why they are threatening to take him to court it's a battle that he can even Buhari will be hard put uh, to now distance himself from the efforts to uh, refurbish the security apparatus mm -hmm.